Yo, how are we doing everybody? So today I'm doing a guide on chapter 8, Parting Ways. Now this chapter was pretty cool. Um, I didn't find it as difficult as the last one, but um, the strategy is definitely uh, pretty unique to this map. Uh, basically what I'm going to be doing, I have uh, three goals here. Uh, the first goal is basically I want to stop any of the troops coming in from the right side. There's uh, the wooden banister or barricade there, but uh, one of the mages is just going to burn through that. And so I need to, or well, what I've chosen to do is put uh, Benedict and Roland over there to uh, prevent them from just uh, swarming in. And yeah, that's that's the first goal is just to control that right side. I think there's like a good like three to five units that like to come uh, from over there. So as long as I uh, prevent them from flooding in, it's it's very controllable, very uh, manageable. Uh, the second goal is I want to be prepared on um, the uh, left side because on the left side, while it takes quite a bit longer, um, they do have like multiple archers that want to come over from the uh, left side and uh, a couple of uh, blades as well. And if they break their way through the very top uh, barricades and you don't have any defense there, they can kind of swarm in and attack your back line. And you really don't want that. And again, if you can get on top of those uh, archers before they uh, make it all the way to the top, that really does help. As there are, uh, I think it's like four or five archers. <laughs> like there's a lot of archers in this battle. So um, not letting them just do whatever they want to do, I think, is uh, a very good plan. And then um, part of that uh, second goal, dealing with the left side, I think it's uh, good to have as many ranged units uh, in your composition as you can. Um, obviously, it's going to differ uh, for every player. People are going to choose different options, and based on which options you've chosen throughout the game, you'll be recruiting different uh, people. But either way, if you've recruited archers, if you've recruited mages, anyone that can attack from a distance, definitely throw them in here, uh, as many as you can, because uh, you really only need like a few frontliners. Like for me, I'm just going to be using um, Roland, uh, Sarah Noah, Eridor, and Benedict. I don't really need uh, any frontline units aside from them. Everybody else can just be casters. Obviously, I have my one healer, but yeah, you just don't need too many uh, frontline as um, there's so many uh, fortifications you can use. There's just really good positioning you can use, so you don't need to worry about that. Uh, Hewitt, which again, depending on... Um, or actually, no, she's always there. But yeah, like uh, with Hewitt, she is super duper good. Uh, just because of that blind arrow. The blind arrow is super strong. As uh, if you blind the archers as they're coming up, obviously uh, they're going to be missing a large amount of their attacks. And there's quite a few of them that will be going out throughout the fight. As this fight does take a while to go through. It took me about uh, 23 minutes. But um, obviously depending on your level, depending on if you're playing uh, like hard like I am. Or if you're playing on normal or easy, then it might go a bit faster. Uh... <laughs> but again, there's just a lot of variables, so just keep that in mind. Um, I do try to make use of uh, Benedict's uh, defensive buff increase, as again, I only have a few frontliners, so they can only take so much damage. Um, thankfully, because of the mages I have, I actually have, uh, well, two mages and a shaman. They can deal a lot of uh, multi-target damage, and also just, uh, again, the range attacks are just nice. So basically starting off, I can clear out a lot of units uh, pretty quickly. So again, another reason just to have like a lot of mages. Very, very useful. Um, the third objective uh, is basically I want to control the center of the map. Because while they uh, more quickly are ascending the right side and the left side, they will burn down the barricades and make their way up the stairs up the center. And also, uh, part of that is you do want your units in that general vicinity, because uh, if you do so, that will goad the uh, boss character into taking that path, and that is that is the ideal way. It is so much easier to control what the uh, boss unit is doing, 
as long as he is going up the uh, the main stairs. Versus if he's going up the uh, the left side, then yeah, obviously uh, you can try to then move your units over there, but then it, it's just a lot of movement when instead you could just be doing just uh, a little bit of movement. Because like, depending on the characters, especially if you have a lot of mages, mages aren't made out of movement. They can't really be like, oh, I'll be on the right side of the map. Now I'll just quickly move over to the left. They do not do that very well. So it's definitely better to uh, uh, focus in the center and get him to uh, get the boss unit to move that way. Obviously, you should be uh, falling back as he is coming up. Uh, so that way he can't just destroy those mages. You want them safely in that top spot by the uh, by the castle gates. But, uh, oh yeah, Rufus. Rufus is his name. Uh, Rufus is a very, very strong unit. Uh, similar to, uh, Evlora, I think her name was. In the, uh, was it the previous chapter or the one before that? <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, he's very, very similar to Evlora. Where, like, he just, he hits like an absolute truck. And, um, he has a lot of HP as well. Um, I don't think he deals quite as much damage as Evlora did. Like, I feel like it's a little bit less. But he has a uh, he has an ability that reduces your defense. So if he hits you twice, you're definitely dead. <laughs> like for sure. I don't care what the character is. If uh, Rufus is attacking two times, yeah, nah, nah, GG. And uh, Rufus is also similar in his speed. Like he uh, takes a good amount of turns. He's not as fast as uh, Avora was. It's not as uh, oppressive. But he is he is definitely uh, faster than uh, most units. So do keep that in mind. Um, and personally, the strategy I'm going to be using here, I don't really have to worry about his damage or um, who's really going to be doing the tanking. Because uh, basically, uh, like I will show you when we get there. But yeah, again, just the three objectives. Number one, contain the uh, enemy units coming through the right barricade. Objective 2, <laughs> contain the enemies coming through the left barricade, uh, particularly the archers, uh, blind those as fast as possible. Again, just in this map in general, you want to have as many ranged attackers as you can. And then, finally, third objective, want to goad the boss uh, through the center while, again, controlling the center yourself. Uh, part of that is you really have to be on the lookout for the mini ranged attackers that uh, the enemy team has, as they have um, they have two battle mages, and then yeah, just all of the uh, bowmen that you have to deal with. So with that being the case, it's just, uh, just being aware of positioning, just try to take note of how many red lines are coming into you. Like, don't be too afraid though, because um, with the archers, while many times you'll see a line saying the archers can uh, target you, uh, depending on the exact positioning, uh, the elevation might get in the way like if they try to shoot the arrow up They can't actually do it because like the wall is in the way or n Either the wall or the barricade. I'm not entirely sure But yeah, there are definitely instances where the archers can't actually hit you when it looks like they can So uh, don't be too afraid uh, If you have like the five lines on you as long as you recognize like oh, okay if three of these lines are like melee units and uh, with my positioning, only like one or two of those can reach me, and then with these archers, maybe only one of these archers can actually, uh, target me. Like, again, it, you just need to pay attention. Um, which again, it is a lot, but as long as you're blinding the archers, it's really not that bad. You can actually afford to be in situations where multiple archers can target you, but if you have two to three of them blind, um, odds are only one of them will be able to hit you. Um, as far as healing goes, I definitely always, like, recommend, like, having at least one healer and then just, uh, making sure you've bought, like, uh, recovery items at the encampment. Because, like, at this point, you shouldn't really be struggling for money. If you are, um, something that you can do is in the encampment, there's also, like, these, uh, mock battles you can do. And you can just repeat those and you can get some money from that. It's not exactly a lot, but yeah, if you're struggling for money, that is one way to do it. But uh, yeah, no. Once um, we've started to clear out the units, gotten rid of um, most of the uh, archers, gotten rid of the mages, 
then really it's just um, goading the uh, boss to where we want him to go. There were a lot of um, item drops I unfortunately wasn't able to pick up, but it's again just staying in uh, my fortification area was like so important. Like just being by the uh, castle gate, especially after I've like basically destroyed all the units on the right side. Like technically there is still one there. But um, again, I can't wait for like everyone to be defeated before I start moving. But yeah, once that threat is evacuated, everybody needs to be pulling back, as you can see uh, right here. Um, I have Roland in the front, like because there's an elevation difference. So basically the only place that uh, they can attack into here uh, coming from mid is where Roland is. So uh, he's going to be uh, blocking there. But uh, more importantly... Uh, again, this depends on like uh, the order in which you're attacking targets, so do pay attention to that. But basically what I'm going to do, let me just fast forward a bit. Yeah, so there's a pikeman in front of Roland. As long as that pikeman is there, he is actually blocking off uh, Rufus's ability to be able to attack me. Uh, <laughs> which is it's really funny. Because, um, yeah, just that unit being there, it wants to attack Roland, and it won't move away. And as long as it stays there, Rufus cannot attack me. <laughs> like, because he cannot uh, phys physically go up. Um, I do believe that uh, once he moves uh, next to the wall, he actually can uh, jump up the higher elevation. Once he has, like, the full movement, he can uh, dedicate to that. And so to combat that, what I end up doing is I move um, Sarah Noah. I move Sarah Noah up there so that he can actually uh, block that spot. And then um, on top of that as well, another thing that we do here, because yeah, I did have to back up a little bit. And then yeah, I use Benedict as well to just block those spots. I do not want Rufus to attack anyone. Rufus just hits too hard. So yeah, we're not going to let him do that. But yeah, what I do here that I really like is uh, the Provoke. Um, that one didn't go off uh, effectively, but the next one I do does. And essentially what that means is, uh, once the Fury goes off, that he 100% wants to attack uh, specifically Eridor. Yeah, there we go. Um, it is now active. It should be around here somewhere. But yeah, uh, once that goes off, that unit wants to attack Eridor, but it physically cannot. So it'll literally just skip its turn. The unit just stands there, doesn't do anything, and yeah, I'm good to go. That unit will never move. I don't have to kill that unit, and as long as he's standing there, Rufus can't get in. So that's basically I've won the game. Like, the game is won, and I, I haven't even, I don't even have to attack Rufus. Like, the game is already basically won at this point. Um, For attacking him, I do literally use uh, all of my casters. Like, they're all just sitting in the back. Uh, building up their TP and just casting um, their spells every time I get the chance to do it. Like, uh, Frederica definitely, like, was the MVP here. Um, there is a healer in the back that is throwing out some uh, heals as well. They're way too far away f uh, from me to, like, really do anything about it. But I'm dealing more damage than the enemy is healing, so I just don't really care. And you can also see I've kind of pulled away now at this point from the left side. Like, yeah, there is technically still an enemy there but i've basically defeated everyone on the left side the only thing that matters is uh rufus like as long as i'm uh you know staying on top of my formation making sure nothing goes awry that rufus can't attack that's all i need to do to win so uh that is the focus there let's go ahead and fast forward to the last part oh that was a bit too far forward but yeah, basically at this point, um, I think uh, Rufus was backing away because his uh, HP was so low. And yeah, <laughs> we uh, we have the higher elevation. Because uh, yeah, he's dropped down. Like he literally can't even uh, jump up there. And yeah, uh, just attacking him with all those ranged casters. He only has, I think, like uh, 200 something, maybe like 300 HP. And so yeah, uh, he never got a chance to attack. I continually uh, just abuse that. Um, you don't have to defeat all the enemies on this map. You only have to defeat Rufus to win, which is what I did here. And super easy. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.